Hi, I'm Alexandra Kinson from Simon Fraser University, and I'll be talking today about Sonic Rain. So in today's society, there's a lot of pressures and stresses. I can imagine that many of you are experiencing your own daily stresses, like giving a conference presentation. So how do we cope with all this stress? Many of you will go for a walk, uh, read a book, talk to your friends and family, but for a lot of people, these aren't really options that work for them. There are many people out there who are experiencing a lot of psychological and physical pain, and they're left feeling very helpless with their situation. So clinicians and researchers alike have been trying to find ways to help people deal with their stress, and way to self-manage their pain. And one thing that people have been looking at recently, even though it's been around for over 2,000 years, is mindfulness meditation. And mindfulness meditation is a way to focus in on your thoughts and your experiences without being judgmental. And what we've come up with is the design, the sonic cradle, which helps to introduce people in a playful and intuitive way to mindfulness meditation. So what is this sonic cradle that I've been talking about? Well, here, here's what it looks like. Okay, so sonic cradle is in complete darkness. So let's just turn on the lights for a moment. So as you can see, people are seated in a very comfortable hammock in a room, and they'll be in the dark. They'll have two Velcro straps, which will go around their chest and around their abdomen, and that will measure their breathing rate. So you'll feel the, the sensors expanding and contracting with their breathing. So if you could, for a moment, close your eyes. These are the actual sounds from the sonic cradle. What we ask participants to do is to simply give them the instructions. So you can control the sounds around you by holding your breath, you add a sound, and to take away a sound, you will breathe really quickly. So you can open your eyes now. And what I wanted to know is, does the sonic cradle actually do what it says it's going to do? Is it going to help you relax? Is it going to help you focus on your breathing? And when we designed it, we, we did a TED Active talk, and we got some qualitative interviews and found that people really liked the sonic cradle. They thought it was a unique experience and that it really helped them, and they thought it was like meditative experiences. But what I wanted to do is see if that held up in a more controlled environment and if we could apply some more quantitative measures to see if it actually is better than simply sitting in a dark room. One of the measures was the Toronto Mindfulness Scale, developed by Mark Lau and colleagues. And that's, it, asks, it assesses two aspects of mindfulness meditation, curiosity, or the act of wanting to learn, and decentering. And what decentering is basically being able to look at your thoughts non-judgmentally. So in our experiment, we had 30 participants, and we had them go through both conditions, and we matched them according to their meditation experience. So did they have at least some meditative practice, or did they have no experience at all? And so I had them complete the Toronto Mindfulness Scale three times, at the beginning, the middle, and the end. And I also did a semi-structured interview to ask them about their experiences. And so I wanted to make it clear that the sonic cradle and self-guided relaxation are it's the same, except that the sonic cradle has the feedback with sounds. Self-guided relaxation has no sounds. So I ran a two-way repeated measures ANOVA and found that the decentering aspect and the curiosity scores did show a trend upwards, meaning that 
that they did show some aspects of mindfulness after their sessions. And particularly for the decentering, there was a positive decentering score after their sessions. Although we couldn't say for sure that Sonic Cradle is any better than self guided relaxation. And then for the qualitative interviews, one participant said that the Sonic Cradle really helped them a lot. It's really dynamic, free floating, your mind is engaged without having to think, it's keeping you, it's keeping you distracted but you're just able to relax. And then for the self-guided relaxation, one participant said that the only technique they used is to sit back, relax, let their mind wander without any judgment or anything. They just watch, it's like traffic on the road. You just watch your thoughts and you can get in line with the thought, you sort of lost yourself in it. So I grouped these interviews and came up with a few themes and the two that relates most to the trauma mindfulness scale is the clarity of mind, reduced thinking or emptiness, and their experiences related to meditation. And I found that the majority of participants found that the sonic cradle exhibited these qualities more so than self-guided relaxation. So all in all the sonic cradle seemed to be effective in getting people into a mindful-like state and particularly with non-meditators, it seemed to help more. However, it's still unclear that it's any better than sitting in the dark without sense. And so our next steps, we'd like to look more at the other measures I use, the affect grid, the state trade anxiety inventory, and also looking at uh, people's brain waves using the emotive epoch EEG. So there are a lot of systems out there that help to introduce people to meditation, but what is unique about the Sonic Cradle is that it draws attention inward. There's no external focus. It's intuitive, it's non-invasive, it's very playful. There are a lot of clinical applications, such as chronic pain patients. It's a way to self-regulate your stress. It plants the seed of what meditation is about, which is focusing in on yourself. It's an alternative to other treatments as well. And more importantly, technology, that's what we're all about. It bridges that, that technology with our psychological well-being. A lot of people think that being on your cell phones or your laptops all the time is negatively impacting our health, but so why can't we make it beneficial and let it help us instead? And if you'd like to get in on this and help people as well. Be happy to email us or or contact me after the session. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alexandra. We can have one short question. Well, I'm a chronic insomniac, so this sounded great. But how is it different than my lying in bed listening to new age music as I, as I meditate? I mean, I don't have a fancy chair, but mm -hmm. Primarily, this would be for people who have difficulties with meditation. A lot of people find, you know, you tell them to focus non-judgmentally. I have no idea what I'm doing or if I'm doing it correctly. So having the sound there as a feedback system, this seems to be helpful for other people. Okay, thank you.